Hello and welcome to another How to Code Well web chat. My name is Peter Fisher. I'm a freelance web and mobile applications developer here in the UK. Now I've been in this industry for over a decade. Before that, I was studying web development at university and before that I had several college courses. And I've seen the programming languages grow and evolve and the web grow and evolve throughout that period of time. And just like last year, what I'm going to do is list my top five web development programming languages to learn in 2018. So number five is Java. Now Java is tried and trusted. It's been around for years and years and years. It powers Android. All the Android phones that you have and see are running Java. It is completely cross-platform in the sense that you can run Java applications on any kind of operating system, be it a Mac or a Windows or Linux. In fact, you've probably used Java applications on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I've put it right at the back here because it's not really the easiest to pick up. In fact, it's actually quite a difficult language to learn. This was the language that I was taught at university. And because it's been around for such a long time, it can seem a little dated because it's not really a very trendy language to learn. Now, I do challenge anybody to try and go for a whole week without using Java or any Java application in your day-to-day -day development of web applications. Java powers so many applications and most of those applications you use to actually develop the applications on. So it's probably powering your IDE. It's probably powering how you communicate to your team. And it may even be powering how your web app is being built and ran and deployed. So for example, Jenkins runs on Java. Java is extremely popular, especially in the software as a service market. So if you're looking for a programming language to learn that is well used and can be used on many platforms, then Java is pretty much the one to go to. At number four, we have Golang. Now, Golang is a very interesting language to learn. It's relatively new. I mean, it's far newer than Java and it's still growing up. It's still maturing. It's got a very vibrant ecosystem and in that ecosystem are packages that help you make simple websites. And I say the word simple websites because you perhaps don't want to be making terribly complicated websites with Golang. There's other languages out there that could probably do it far easier and quicker. And I think that might change when Golang matures a little bit more. Now, unfortunately, there isn't many web jobs out there for Golang. Golang, though, is very tailored towards the server. So if you were specifically a sysadmin kind of person and you were trying to develop applications based around perhaps networking and things like that, then maybe there would be more web jobs out there for you, but not in terms of just building websites, e-commerce sites and the such. Now, in my opinion, Golang is not taught enough in schools and universities. Hopefully that will change as Golang matures and gets better. There are other languages that you could learn, like Rust, for instance. And I've been actually working with some Rust applications this year. And I found it a very interesting language. It's quite a complicated language to learn. I certainly wouldn't recommend Golang to anybody who's coming to the web development industry without any prior knowledge of programming. And this brings us to number three, which is Python. Python is highly taught in schools and universities. And therefore, there is a lot of job opportunities out there for Python developers. And I would definitely recommend learning Python if it's the first web development language uh, to learn. And it's got a, a very nice package management system. So it's a very easy to install libraries and so forth. However, saying that, it doesn't have many frameworks to choose from. Now, Python is very good for one-off scripts as well as websites themselves and web applications. So I use Python myself 
to import a lot of the YouTube videos that I've got onto my blog. And there's a lot of support for different types of APIs to pull in third party applications and so forth. I really like Python. It's a lovely language. It's a beautiful language to, to look at and learn. And it, it kind of teaches you programming in a, in a nice sort of soft way, in my, in my opinion. Next, we have PHP, which is at number two. Disclaimer here, this is what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm a Symfony developer. I've also developed lots of WordPress applications. I've developed lots of Laravel applications and applications and other frameworks such as Cake PHP and Yi and all of that kind of stuff. So I know PHP uh, very well and I'm pushing to use PHP 7 far more and push legacy applications to that kind of uh, version. So a little bit of a disclaimer there that this is basically what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. PHP is very easy to learn. It's very easy to pick up. It's very uh, flexible in, and some people could say that that is a bad thing because maybe it's too flexible. In PHP 7, it's getting a little bit better with type hinting and so forth, but it's certainly nowhere near where the other languages are. Now, PHP 7, which uh, was released uh, a couple of years ago, is super fast, but the thing is that there's a lot of legacy code out there. There is a lot of legacy applications that are quite large applications that need to be uh, pushed up to PHP 7. So there's a lot of work to be done uh, in businesses and so forth. And there's a lot of work to be done on developers to in, to encourage the companies and so forth to progress to PHP 7. Now it uses something called Composer, which is a fantastic package management system. It's very simple to understand and, and learn and pick up and use. And all the frameworks are kind of intermingled in the sense that there's a lot of components that are shared across the uh, package management system. And that's really nice because you can jump from one framework to another framework and still have some sort of understanding of how the framework works because you're used to those components. Now I'm going to be doing an awful lot of PHP tutorials in 2018 and I've got quite a few tutorials that I've already done. I've also got quite a few PHP courses on Skillshare and Udemy. So if you're learning PHP, then do check those out. And finally, we have JavaScript. Now JavaScript has a zero barrier of entry because everyone's browser has JavaScript. So you can literally write code in the browser. There is no need to install or buy any kind of IDE. You can just pick it up and run with it. It's a fantastic language. However, it is quite messy in the package management. So this year we had Bauer JS backing out of the package management arena and we've got Yarn and we've got NPM and other package management systems. Now, not only is there package management mess, but there's also mess, in my opinion, towards um, actual script runners or task runners. So these are things like uh, Grunt and Gulp and uh, Webpack and all of those kind of things. However, I believe that this is going to get easier when it starts growing up a little bit more. I think JavaScript is going through some growing pains at the moment, and it's just to be expected. This isn't um, a downer on JavaScript at all. It's just how it's evolving and progressing. There's a huge amount of jobs available for JavaScript because JavaScript not only can run websites, it can run on the server, but it can also build cross-platform mobile applications if you're using things like Accelerator or Titanium or PhoneGap, things like that, where you actually build the application in JavaScript and those applications can be used in, say, uh, iOS and Android. And another disclaimer, I suppose, I also build quite a few Titanium applications as well. And I use Alloy.js, I use Backbone.js and Underscore.js quite frequently when I'm creating applications. JavaScript is a fantastic programming language to learn. It's very flexible, it's very fluid. However, things are progressing which might make it a little bit more tighter 
and a little bit more perhaps in line with the other languages as the year progresses. So these are my five web development programming languages to learn in 2018. I'll appreciate your comments. If you've got any, put them down in the comment section below. If you've agreed with this, then do give a thumbs up. And if you think there's anything that I should have added or replaced, then also put those in the comment section below. Thanks ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone. And I'll speak to you again next time. Cheers. Bye.